This week finds Joseph in jail with the baker and the wine steward. We all know the story of their dreams, and Joseph, the dreamer who did not understand his own dreams, becomes the interpreter. How interesting that it is the baker and the wine steward. The Pharaoh must have had many servants in different roles, yet Yehovah chose these two particular men for this narrative. Wherever you see bread and wine, you are going to see something about covenant. In Genesis, Melchizedek offers the same to Abraham. In the book of Ruth, we see she and Boaz sharing a covenant meal through barley bread and the vinegar, which is overly fermented wine. In Proverbs 9, 4 and 5, we read, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that lacks understanding, she says to him, that is wisdom, Come, eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. Yeshua has called himself the bread of life and has gone on to proclaim these most contentious words in John six fifty three through 56 Then Yeshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. It is known that the wine represents the blood. Red wine must be used at Jewish rituals for this reason. Of course, at the final meal, Yeshua engages in a Passover ceremony, explaining the true meaning not only of the bread and the wine, but of the Exodus. Matthew 26, 26-28 and as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and said a blessing, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He is making a covenant with his disciples, and we notice that one of them leaves and does not complete the ritual. There are some interesting differences between the nature of bread and wine. Their agricultural longevity, their harvest time, their processing, their fermentation time, their modes of storage, their use, their overall effect on the body. We will revisit this shortly. There is another notable difference between the two elements, and that is that the blessing said over them in a Jewish ceremony. Perhaps you have visited with other people, or perhaps you yourself observe what is called Kiddush on a Friday night, as the beginning of Sabbath. The name means to sanctify or to set apart. We set apart the time of Sabbath as the seventh day, as it was set apart by Yehovah in creation. Both blessings begin with the same affirmation. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. The blessing to Jehovah is said over the wine first. The wine blessing continues, who creates the fruit of the vine. The word for create here is bore, and it is used only for Jehovah. Here are some examples. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And Psalm 51.10 Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The heart is a seat of the spirit, and only Yehovah can create a new heart. The second part of the blessing over the bread continues, who brings forth bread from the earth. The Hebrew word for to bring forth is motzi. It is the word used as Yehovah brings the Israelites out of Egypt. The reason for this usage is said to go back to Psalm 104:14. He causes the grass to grow for cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. We also read in Genesis 1, 12 and 13, And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. The bread, the growing of the wheat, the grinding of the flour, the kneading of the dough, the baking of the loaf, all these require the work of man. It's also interesting to note that Yeshua, who is the bread of life, was brought forth out of the ground on the third day, after three days and three nights. What can we learn from these comparisons? 
The bread is the body, and the wine is the blood. This has already been established. We know that the life is in the blood, Leviticus 17.11, and therefore it also represents the spirit. Perhaps we can compare the two elements to faith, the spirit, and works, the flesh. Let's look again at the differences mentioned earlier in light of this understanding. Interestingly, vines, uh, grape vines, will produce for over 40 years. So just like a spiritual aspect of life will continue on through your whole life, the vines will produce for a long time. However, wheat or bread must be planted every year. In other words, we must always be vigilant for the opportunity of doing good works. Grapes are harvested in the fall. Uh, much as the soul, the spirits of men, we have seen the spirits of people will go back to God at the end, at the end of the season, but wheat is harvested in the spring, and so we begin to do our good works as soon as we have learned to walk with Yeshua. The wine has a natural yeast to it. Nothing must be added. The Spirit of God, as it comes, is complete, can fill us, and it's uh, applicable for every good work and everything that we need to do. But the bread requires a human intervention of adding the, the fermentation for wine is slow. It will take several days, up to several weeks. In other words, it's a, a long lasting process, just as spiritual growth is a longer lasting process. The fermentation for bread is very quick. It will happen in maybe two or three hours, just as be constantly looking for the opportunity to do works. Works will be constant through our day, how we can apply those things which were listed in Galatians. Wine, as soon as it is ready, made, and finished, is processed immediately. It's immediately stored. In other words, the grapes are immediately processed, and they go through the whole process, and the wine is stored as a final product. So we can see the spirit there. Once it has its beginning activity, it's there and available for us to use any time. Wheat, on the other hand, is stored as a raw material and it is processed as we need it. So we might be called on for different times to do different things. We must be aware of our surroundings, of our spiritual surroundings, what, how will we proceed in every situation, and then we will produce those things as needed. Wine itself is not cooked. It comes to a finished product by itself. Bread does need to be cooked. Again, it's a human intervention. Wine is for special seasons. It's certainly not necessary for every day. And just like there are certain sweet seasons when we feel closer to the Spirit, or not, I'm not saying that we don't look for the Spirit every day, but there are there is an ebb and flow to the communication and life with the Spirit. But the bread, the works that we do, are for daily life. We need to be practicing those things all the time. Wine has a quicker effect on your body than bread but it also wears off more quickly. Again, the ebb and flow of life. In bread has a, long, a longer effect on your physical body, but it's sustained. It keeps you going. So we have seen the wine represent the bread represents the body. We'll see wine is like the faith that comes from the spirit. Bread is parallel to our works that we do. In light of that, I will just add one more note. The order of the presentation of the bread and the wine is different for Kiddush and for Passover. At Kiddush, we share the wine first. This speaks of the fact that we are united by the Spirit, and then we share a meal together as a body. Only at Passover is the bread presented first. This speaks to the fact that Yeshua's body had to be broken before his Spirit could be released to the world. Back in the jail cell, we find that it is a wine steward who will keep his life but the baker will lose his. As it is written, John six sixty three. It is a spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Also Ecclesiastes twelve seven. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. The spirit of man is eternal. The flesh will perish.